The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is on the air and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to talk about five plants you should not grow in your garden, and we'll give you the reasons why we advise you not to. An intensive planting, what is it? Is it a good idea, a bad idea? More about that. And then we have guest Kelly Smith Trimble. She's an author, vegetable gardening expert, and that's great information all around. Plus your garden questions, and that all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program. Whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or anywhere in between, listening via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com radio tab, or other means, podcast replay, or in-studio video replay. We thank you for tuning in, taking time out of your day. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, best friend, co-host, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, where there now is over fourteen hundred garden videos, short and long format, uh, of this radio program, as well as in garden content, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other social media platforms in which you can contact us. The uh, the, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show executive sponsor is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes and fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA and we offer lifetime warranty and product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. There's a number of ways in which you can contact us anytime, anywhere and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics uh, hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can, you can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag TWVG, or Twitter handle is at TWVG Show. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. Hey, Holly, do you think some people would want to win some stuff that we have? Well, if you want to win something for free, do you want an easy way to get rid of weeds? You can win with a weed dragon that attaches to a standard propane tank or the mini dragon that attaches to a one-pound propane tank. When flame weeding, the most effective method is to catch the weeds early from one to four inches. At the small stage, flaming is nearly 100% effective at killing weeds, whereas weeds over four inches are more difficult to kill without multiple pl- fl- flamings. Here's how you enter to win for a weed dragon okay, or okay, hold on, let's let a mini get, dragon. Let's get people oh. the opportunity to get something and write down. Uh, so what this is, it's a chemical-free application that you take with a propane it's like, uh, yeah, you a just, torch. You're you, burning you, the weeds. Correct. You, you're breaking up the cell molecules, which kills the plant from the, the top. But it has end. like a little... Um, it has a, a, uh, a... Like a cage. A cage, yeah. So you're not like just torching your yard. Yeah, it's got a wand. Mm-hmm, and, a and, wand. and you can find uh, all of the information and the images... At our website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, it's at the top of the page. You don't have to search for it; it's pinned right there. So, if you want to see what these items look like, uh, you can uh, get uh, find find it there. So, you're going to go to t. You're going to you can look on the website, or you can email twvgshow at gmail dot com. In the subject line, you can put we dragon or mini dragon. You want to indicate what you want. You want one, and then, one entry per um, person. And, you know, inf- contact information. Subject: The drawing is the first week in June. To see them yourself, you can go to flameengineering.com. And if you want to buy one, you can use the code WVG19 to get free ship. Is what you want to TWVG show at gmail.com is the location you want and identify whether or not uh, you uh, which one you want the mini dragon or the tall the, the right. mini dragon or what's the other weed dragon? Weed dragon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so moving on. Yeah. 
Uh, there's five plants that we recommend that you never should grow in your garden. And we're going to go over why you should never grow them in your garden. Uh, and some of these are common. Some of these are uncommon. I wouldn't say never. But with, definitely with we want to... Yeah. It's not like if you grow this, um, you're going to, I don't know, cause a, a nuclear war. Um, but you want to... Make sure that you are being mindful of the way you grow them. So the first one is mint. And if you're familiar with Creeping Charlie, you, that's part of the mint family. Mint is obviously part of the mint family. So you would think to yourself, I would never plant Creeping Charlie. So it's kind of the same with mint, but you can grow it in a container for sure, definitely. Um, or right, you could even do like maybe a raised bed, but definitely you want to keep it in a container because it's very invasive. It, it will shoot runners, and a lot of these plants will do that, a couple of these will. Runners are an underground root system that will go three or four feet and then pop up. Raspberries are known for this as well. Um, that, that will, that's how they propagate. They grow a certain distance underground, they pop up. Creeping Charlie's the same way. Uh, but mint, you want to grow it in a container, so you do not have an overtake. that It will overtake your area very, very quickly. And you will not be able to get it out of your garden uh, if you put it in the garden, physical ground. Even in a container, or mm-hmm. uh, even in a raised bed, I would highly uh, restrict that with some type of weed barrier underneath the bed to prevent it from going down even 6, 8, 10 inches and going under the boards and going out in the yard because it will take over. Yeah, it's very aggressive. So let's go on to corn. Which people who are listening grow corn in their backyard. And they're saying, well, what, what's wrong with growing corn? Well, it depends on who you talk to. Some people say backyard sweet corn is the greatest thing ever. Other people say it's a complete waste of time. Well, the reason why we put it on our list is two reasons. One, you have to have a block of, of area in which you can grow. And uh, so it pollinates. Corn has to pollinate through the tassels that drops the pollen to the the hairs on the ear of the corn. Each ear contains hundreds and thousands of hairs, and those represent each individual kernel. And if they do not pollinate from the pollen falling from the tassel, the top of the plant, then that's when you have irregular or undeveloped ears of corn. So you have to do 5 by 10, uh, 15 by 20, something like that. You just cannot do a single row of corn and expect it to pollinate correctly. And secondly, it requires quite a bit of nutrients uh, in the soil. It's you have to have a lot of nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yeah. It's a very heavy and nitrogen feeder. We grew it successfully. We conditioned ourselves with a lot of nitrogen. We had success. Compost and natural organic yeah. material. Um, and that was fine. But if you if you have a small backyard garden maybe you're like doing a four by eight or don't wait don't, yeah, don't, don't waste don't don't I, waste the space right basically. you can buy it non-gmo corn at the farmer's market uh and uh, probably at your local grocery store for very very little mm-hmm. uh, on so that's why we put that on the list okay so let's look at dill dill is uh, so we grew dill in containers nine years ago yeah and it's still well it took eight years it took seven and seven years to get rid of it mm-hmm what we let, yeah. let's tell the story. So we decided to grow. What do we grow in dresser drawers or something? We're in dresser drawers and pots. Yeah, along the side of the along fence. the side of the fence in the front part of our house, and we planted dill. And it went to seed. It went to seed, and then it went everywhere. So then the next year, we dug up the soil. We put in a more in ground in ground garden, and here popped up this dill. So before it seeded, we would pull out as much as we can. And we did that for... We saved the seeds. Now, it wasn't just we threw it in the trash. Yeah, no, we have uh, the seeds. And we, we, used the, we used most of the dill or as much as we could. Right. At, uh, about um, the third year in, we continued to do this, saving the seed and purging the bed. And at one point, we had one full gallon, mason jar full of clean dill seed. Right. It wasn't cha- there was no chaff in it. There was no junk. It was clean because I sifted it because I wanted to see what I had. We had one gallon. I think we still got three quarters of a gallon. Or uh, we got a half gallon still left. Right. In the last we, year and a half, we haven't had that problem because we've been able to purge the bed of all remaining dill that was viable seeds in the soil. Right. So you, if you do grow dill, you could grow it in a container. Or maybe you want to, if you do grow in a container, it's still going to spread. But maybe you want to grow it in a container more, near a more natural area, and then you can um, let that dill just do whatever it wants. Uh, be aware, based on where you're at and what 
state you live in, dill can be and sometimes is registered as an invasive species. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. that is something so you, you might want to be aware of. Be aware of that. Um, so, or bamboo. Now, there's two different types of bamboo. There's running bamboo and there's clumping bamboo. Okay. So either one at some point will spread. The running bamboo is going to spread a lot faster, and it's going to grow kind of like uh, mint does and Caribbean charlotte grows the roots underground. Un sends, sends runners out and, and 30, 40 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is not just oh, a couple inch. They will shoot across so the that's, yard. So that's the running bamboo. Okay. And your friend's dad grew, I think that's probably what he grew was the running bamboo. Yeah, I, I'm from southern Illinois and had an, uh, a friend, his dad said, oh, I'm going to grow bamboo. This was after the fact. And he put bamboo in the yard. Now, this, this is zone six down in, in the southern Illinois area. And he couldn't get rid of it. just kept coming up. He'd mow it down, kept coming up. Well, he called Monsanto, the developer of the uh, weed killer Roundup, mm -hmm. and they said, well, we don't even have anything that would kill that bamboo. <laughs> so eventually, over time and years of purging, digging, finding all the roots and the rhizomes and everything, he finally got out of the yard. But it was about a five-year process. And the chemicals... When the biggest chemical company in the world says, we don't have anything that will kill that, you've got some problems. Now, bamboo is a great product. It can do many, many different things. It's very versatile if done and grown in, in the right environment and conditions. You can grow clumping, clumping bamboo, but it will eventually uh, it'll, it'll continue to grow. So there's not really a good way to control either of them, but the clumping bamboo takes years right. to, to grow. Now, like you that. can grow bamboo in containers either in your house or in the yard. Here's the warning that I will give you. If you grow bamboo in a container and it has a hole in the bottom for drainage, you want to put that container on a concrete or, or pavement area because even though it's in a container, that bamboo can find that drainage hole, root in the ground, send a runner out 20 or 30 feet, and pop back up and then invade your yard. It, can be, it happens, so be aware of that. Finally, on our uh, list of things that I wouldn't recommend, we wouldn't recommend growing in your garden, and it, it, it depends on your garden, is uh, perennial plants. Now, that being said, that this is something that if you say you live in a place and you might only live there for a couple of years. Or um, space is or very, space very, is very limited. You don't want to necessarily grow perennial plants. Now, if space is limited and you love asparagus, then grow asparagus if you're going to be there for a while. But this is a, a time investment. So something like asparagus, something like rhubarb, something like strawberries, um, sunchokes, raspberry bushes, blueberry bushes, whatever. These are things that take time to develop and grow, and you have to. And will stay for a very and long sp time. Stay for a long time. So asparagus up to fifty years, rhubarb up to fifteen years, Jerusalem artichokes I don't know how many years, uh, strawberries up to seven years. So there's a commitment here. And a, and a real estate that's being used up for a plant that you don't have to do much work for to get produce off of, but keep that in mind. Yeah, so you want to you want to remember that and uh, keep that in the back of your head before you go and grow it or try to grow it. So those are just some of the different vegetables or fruits and ornamentals that we would recommend you not grow in your garden and the reasons why we would not uh, have you grow them in your garden. Now, you may grow them and have very good success with them, but that's, uh, that's your deal, and if it works for you, continue to do such. Well, when we come back, don't go anywhere. The impact of intensive gardening. We'll go over what intensive gardening is and the reasons why you may choose to exercise that particular garden method. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout.
Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Composting without a compost pile? Why, certainly. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Dig a trench 8 to 10 inches deep in your garden and dump any organic material you can find in that trench. In time, the material will break down and provide your plants with rich nutrient compost. Pharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit pharmaceuticals.com. Gardeners know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marble that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. New, new natural healing ointment. USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills 4930 West Loomis Road 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Pharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. We're going to have more garden-related conversations. Do you hear that? That's your plants growing. Riveting, isn't it? With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Do you know why those plants were so quiet? Because <laughs> no. they were happy they were being fed Dr. Earth for life. Uh, Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, organic, fr- garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. You can use Dr. Earth when we intensive plant our garden, but what is intensive planting? That will help the plants, but what is intensive planting and why should one maybe look at this particular method of gardening? We kind of talked about it last week with uh, some of the different spacings, but uh, the intensive gardening here. Intensive gardening is a more extreme form of companion planting gardening that is space-saving and efficient. So 
companion planting really isn't a thing, but it's more like poly culture planting. Polyculture is wherever you take one plant and grow it an, around or near another plant to ha- benefit both plants. Example being squash, you know, a zucchini plant, and you plant basil around that particular plant, and the fragrance or the, the, the smell of the basil helps detour and mask or detour the squash bug from getting on your squash plant. It, it, the aroma masks the scent that the squash plant emits and it confuses the insects. That's polyculture. Two plants growing in one space to, u- to, to benefit both of them. So you're getting basil and you're getting squash. That's just one example. Mm-hmm. So that is a good example. Um, so it's basically just the use of planting for like planting things together, closer together. You can also kind of overlap plants. It's a combination of the two. So, in, so if, if the seed packet says uh, plant... X plant one foot apart. Instead of doing one foot apart, the intensive planting would be go about eight inches apart. Kind of that example, is that what we're referring to when we talk about the uh, intensive planting? Right. Yeah. So you want to plant things a little bit closer together. Now, there's some pros and cons yes. here. One pro is that if it's planted close enough together, once it once it grows out, it's going to become almost sort of like a ground cover type situation. So if you're growing squash really close together, squash puts on those huge leaves. They're covering the ground. They could help suppress weeds. So that's one bonus. But on the flip side of that, if they're too close together and that's then they overlap and the squash gets something like powdery mildew, then it's it or it's very humid outside and the nights aren't getting cool, it can increase chances of powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is moisture that develops on the leaves and is not able to dry prior to it getting dark and mildew begins to form, just like in your bathroom. That's the same procedure that's occurring in the garden. If we plant c- plants or squash too close, and this occurs on grapes, beans, cucumbers, and some me- uh, melons, it will choke. The, it will kill the plant because the sun can't get through that mildew. And there are remedies online, different recipes in which you can apply a, a, a material, a liquid, whether it's milk or vinegar or neem oil, to dis- disrupt and clean or break apart that mildew that's on the leaf. But again, if we have them too close, they're going to choke each other out because one plant's not going to be able to get the sunlight that another plant is. So there is a fine line to how to space, and it comes with some uh, research online and some personal experience based on how close in which we can put these plants in order to get the most out of the plants and the space we have available. Right. So one very common, well-known intensive planting method is a square foot garden method. Mm -hmm. This is technically intensive planting because you're taking um, a square foot space and you're planting whatever it calls for. So, for example, one square foot is going to hold like one tomato or two pepper plants or nine beets or 16 carrots or 16 radishes. And that is a form of intensive planting. That's a lot of plants in one square foot. But at the same time, it's very it's very successful. People have a lot of success with it. And it's also very mindful of space. And then if you have a four foot by four foot raised bed or ground that you grid off into 16 one foot square areas, eat, you have essentially 16 gardens growing at one time beets, beans, radishes, and when one of those gardens is done and complete, you can put another crop in there, revitalize the soil, and start growing another crop in that one foot square area. Some crops take more than one square feet, foot, so you have to be aware. You can look at, uh, go online, look at square foot gardening method grids, uh, and see what would be best to utilize, and we practice that in our particular garden, even though it's a ground garden, we utilize square foot gardening as much as possible. Right. You don't have to have a raised bed to use square foot gardening. Or you could use it even in a container idea because if you have like a five-gallon bucket, that's about one square foot of space so you can grow accordingly to that. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, um, intensive gardening is um, you can use it in soilless methods. So if you are doing something like a hydroponic or an aquaponic, you can use intensive gardening for that. So it's not just related to the soil, containers, raised beds, what have you. But that's the most common method that it's used for is the uh, ground con- uh, raised beds and containers. For something like uh, straw bale gardening, those are straw bales, once you condition them, they're very high in nutrients. So you could, I think you could intensive plant in those. To, to a certain degree. Right. To a certain degree, you can't put you know a whole bunch of a specific crop in there because you're feeding off the internal 
uh, hummus that is developed. Humus. Humus that is, is Hummus developed. is what we eat. Yeah. Humus is what the plants eat. Depends on who you are, I guess. I guess. Um, you what, feed your plants hummus? Yeah. But what you need to do <laughs> is be aware there are charts on the squir- str- str- a square straw Strawberry. bale gardening method that... But another form uh, you could use the intensive planting for a straw bale is when you plant through the top and then you plant on the, the sides. sides. Yeah. And that could go with a lot of things. Uh, yeah. And, and you can do that by uh, intensive gardening. Uh, some other uh, benefits to the intensive gardening is if you have a crop failure, let's say you have a 16 square foot raised bed and you have beans in two of the square feet. Now, bush bean, you can plant nine bush beans in one square foot. If one of those crops fail, you still have the opportunity to have another crop that harvested in that other square foot. And you can just rip those plants up, get rid of them, plant a new crop, or replant, succession plant in that particular uh, uh, square uh, when it comes to crop failure. For, for a large garden, if, a, if you're doing row gardening and you have a 30-foot row and something happens, you may lose that 30-foot row. But with a square foot gardening method, you may only lose that one square feet. And if there is a disease that attacks one particular plant that's not susceptible, uh, the other plants are not susceptible, you've only killed one plant or one section of plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, if you're not sure if intensive gardening is for you, you could try it out. You could take, maybe you have have like two garden beds or something, and you can try a portion of it out and see if you like it. Try something like squash or... I, I would go a smaller crop. Maybe, than squash. Yeah. okay. Like uh, peppers. Peppers, uh, yeah. But uh, peppers should be... Beets are good. Peppers for, should be planted close together anyway because they, they're like friendly plants. Yeah, they, and that you think that's uh, it's not a joke. They like, it's called touching hands. Uh, by the time that they begin to mature and develop fruit, their leaves begin touching one another and they feel more, I guess, confident. Uh, secure. Secure. And they actually do produce, and that's why we plant our peppers about eight to nine inches apart in a hedge. And by the time they mature, they're growing into one another, and they produce very, very heavily. Mm -hmm. So they're friendly little plants. Um, Other things that I would recommend in a square foot gardening method would be um, radishes if you get them in early, carrots if you get them in early, beets you're okay with. Beans would be the the go-to method. Um, You could, yeah, you could also intend to plant lettuce. Yes. Because that, that's a, usually like a leaf lettuce, so it's cut and... Cut and come again. Yeah. Uh, what you want to be aware of, and some of you may have leaf lettuce already planted. We'll just dive into this little fun fact. Uh, when you're trimming back your cut and come again lettuce, trim it back at 50% the height. Don't mow it right down to the ground because it takes 17 days. It puts the plant into a shock of um, and, and stops root development and growth for about 17 days before it starts regenerating the um, requirements to start putting on more top growth. So if you cut the lettuce at 50% the height, it will take less time to regenerate, less time to go in, uh, almost no shock, and you can get a more quicker harvest off of that, uh, that leaf lettuce by trimming at half the height versus leaving just a stub on the soil level. So yeah, definitely um, intensive planting is is something to definitely use. Um, and then along with succession planting is good. But I like how people don't realize that this is something that if they do follow a square foot method, that they've been intensive planting for many years. And if you want uh, to uh, help your garden grow better by eliminating some of the insects in your garden, you can get some fi- uh, go to Phylum Bio Products. They have the products that you need. So yeah, so now we're start- it's starting to warm up outside. We've had we're, um, spring is definitely in the air, and so you do you want to show your yard with beetles and grubs? If you're looking to control these common insect pests, Phylum Bio Products just has that potent, environmentally safe biological pest control products. It is the first BT insecticide powerful enough to control both adult and larvae stages of susceptible pests. And unlike chemical products, Phylum's line of products do not pose a risk to beneficial insects such as bees, butterflies, and other pollinators that exist with chemical products. Therefore, you can now achieve control rates that you expect from the chemical insecticides without doing the harm to the rest of the environment. You can visit phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H. Y-L-L-O-M, bioproducts.com. It's a great product. It does not kill the bees and butterflies and the native insects. 
in your yard. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk with author uh, and editor and huge vegetable gardening advocate, Kelly smith Trabell uh, will be with us, and uh, we'll talk to her. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. You can always get a hold of us at twvgshow at gmail.com. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root to soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel-filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use for indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it, tomatosnaps.com. World's coolest rain gauge.com. Need I say more? Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 Planting Tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Dig perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com. Soil Diva is the best kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available in mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all-natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. If you like fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood, you should check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. You can find out where to pick up top quality produce from tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and sweet, juicy blueberries. If you're sick of bland, milly peaches and lackluster blueberries from your local grocer tree ripe has just what you they come right to a stop in your neighborhood fresh off the truck right from the source for location and schedules visit tree-ripe.com they have locations all over including iowa upper and lower michigan minnesota illinois and right here in wisconsin tree-ripe.com is your go-to for the freshest produce around have you considered putting in a perennial garden in your backyard it's time for this week's michigan garden moment This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. A perennial garden is a great way to utilize areas of your garden that may be inoperable for a traditional ground garden, or it is a good way to continue to have a production of plants for year after year with very little maintenance. 
You can go with asparagus that will last 20 to 50 years, rhubarb that will last up to 15 years, or berry bushes such as raspberries or blueberries. You just have to check for the correct acidity if you're going to grow blueberries and correctly adjust the soil for the accommodations. An orchard might be a better alternative for a particular area in your yard. You can get all types of fruit-bearing trees. You want to be aware that some trees require two of the same varieties or like varieties in order to pollinate. There are fruit trees such as pears that are self-pollinating. They don't need a secondary tree to pollinate the fruit, which will give you the opportunity to have multiple different types of trees in your backyard. A strawberry patch might be in the works for your property. There are June-bearing and ever-bearing strawberries. They both have individual and specific characteristics for what may work best for your environment and your growing conditions. Also, Jerusalem artichokes make a good perennial plant. These are just some of the many that you can use in your garden. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Rowmaker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So it's springtime, summer's just around the corner, and you're thinking about doing a garden. Now, whether you're doing a small garden, patio, porch, deck, or you're doing a large in-ground garden, raised beds, the place to go is Bluemel's Landscape and Garden Center because they have everything that you possibly could need for that. They have a very knowledgeable staff, they have bulk material, and they have all great, uh, great, wonderful plants ready for you to grow. From your vegetables to your flowers to your herbs to natives, they have everything there. And there's no such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb question is a question that's not asked because their staff can get you the right answer to the question or problem that you have. You can find them at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. You can call 414-282-4220 or visit bluemills.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. You're, you're, you're either listening to this show for a couple of reasons. One, you're either a gardener, you want to be a gardener, you know somebody who's a gardener, or you accidentally picked up a gardening magazine at your local dentist office. So you're one of those people. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the IV Organics 3 in 1 Plant Garden Hotline and bring in our next guest. Kelly Smith Trimble is an author, editor, and huge vegetable gardening advocate. She lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, and recently her book, Vegetable Gardening Wisdom, hit the shelves. Welcome to the program, Kelly. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, appearing to be a very busy day to join us on the program (laughs) and share some of your garden wisdom with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Thank you. So yeah, let's, I'm happy to be here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's start with this. You like to grow lettuce uh, as mulch. How can one use lettuce as mulch? We, when I think of mulch, I think of shredded leaves, straw, chemical-free grass clippings. How does this work for you? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the purpose of mulch really is to, um, you know, to protect the soil from moisture loss, and it's also to prevent weeds. So, um if you can use low-growing plants like lettuce to do some of those um, things as well, and then you get the added benefit of being able to harvest it. So um, one of the ways I use lettuce, you know, lettuce is usually a cool-season crop. It's hard to grow it in the warm season, but if you grow it underneath a taller plant like tomatoes or maybe even peppers, you can kind of get dual purpose where the lettuce can kind of serve as a mulch where it is, you know, shading the soil and preventing um, weeds from growing up. But you also get that benefit of the tomato shading the, the lettuce so you can actually harvest the lettuce in a warmer um, season. So it's kind of a dual-purpose um, technique. Now, whenever that uh, goes to bolt, do you allow it continue to grow, or do you just chop it and drop it and uh, move on? Um, you know, I, I let my lettuce bolt and flower in the spring season, but when it, if it starts doing that in the um, in a 
the warmer in the summer, I will harvest what I can and then chop the rest down and just kind of work it into the soil. Okay. So some people swear by the use of compost tea. Let's talk about compost tea. What is it? Is there good or bad compost tea? How does one apply this to their garden? And it's definitely not something you drink. (laughs) (laughs) No, I would not recommend drinking it. Um, But though it is kind of created like, you know, some other... Um, teas like kombucha and things um, that are also really popular. You know, I don't have a ton of experience with compost tea. I'll be honest. I um, have used, like, packets that people um, sell and and, um, just made, like, really small batches myself. But I have not brewed compost tea the way that, like, commercial brewers will brew it. Um, So I know a little bit about it. It's it's basically that the idea is taking all of the benefits of compost and kind of... um, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to say? Just um, concentrating it and um, using that in the soil. And also the idea is that you can use it on um, as, a, as a foliar spray, so on tomatoes and such, um, to prevent these diseases, like leaf diseases. Um, I think there's, you know, debate <laughs> in the, the science community about whether um, that is truly beneficial or not, you know, or more beneficial than just using compost directly in your soil but um there are a lot of products out there now and there's a lot of people who kind of swear by compost tea there's there's a lot that goes into it in terms of kind of a brewing process but i do think that from what i've you know read and what i've heard it's better to um have a process where you're actually aerating the tea as it's brewing rather than just kind of um steeping compost in water so um i definitely if you're going to try it i think you should either get it from a source that is doing that aeration or to try doing that process at home yourself. And, and I've been told and I've seen and I've read that the smaller the water molecules of the tea, that you, the, the smaller, the, the tinier the mist that you can get on the plant, the more re- available the plant can take it through its leaves. And I don't know how hmm. true that is, but uh, uh, obviously if, if you see a lot of sources, you kind of have to lean towards, well, that might be true, so you need to experiment with yourself uh, in your garden. Yeah. Uh, we're approaching tomato season, and tomatoes are the most popular grown, and most people like tomatoes. I know a few people that don't, but I'm still friends with them. Uh, what are some yeah. of uh, your tips uh, for growing uh, tomatoes, uh, and, and how and, and how do you get them? What, what are some of your go-to tips? Yeah. So, um, you know, with, I, I've started planting my tomatoes, but a uh, near area, you may not have started planting them yet. Um, and one thing that I kind of tell people, you know, a lot of people talk to me about heirlooms, and I love heirloom varieties myself, but I do um, grow a mix of varieties. So I do grow, I try, I try to, you know, try out new heirlooms every year because there are so many kind of interesting things out there. But I also do grow a couple kind of tried and true hybrids in my garden, like Better Boy, um, just for that reliability. So I would recommend that people you know, grow a couple different varieties, and and for me personally, I do grow both hybrids and heirlooms in my garden. The hybrids, you know, have a good um, track record of reliability, and so that is something you can kind of fall back on, which is nice. Um, So this year I'm I'm growing, um, gosh, I can't think of all the varieties, but I am growing like six six heirlooms, um, some new to me, some not. Cherokee Cup Purple is, is definitely one that's super popular in my area, so I'm growing that. Um, but then I do have a couple hybrids that I'm growing, too. Better Boy is kind of that go-to for me. Um, and then when you're planting, I definitely follow that um, the kind of guide of planting deep. So I used to work for a, a plant company, and that was something that we definitely talked about a lot was to, to plant your tomatoes deeply. And that basically means it can't even mean covering um, the first, you know, maybe two or three leaves even of the plant if you do have, you know, multiple leaves on a transplant. So, um, and the idea behind that is really that those leaves can kind of turn into extra roots below the soil level and give you um, kind of a leg up on um, the root structure of that tomato plant. Okay, so we were talking with Kelly Smith Trimble as an author, editor, and huge vegetable advocate. Um, now, what a re- what's a recent mistake you made in your vegetable garden you know you shouldn't have done but did it anyway? Um, yeah, this is a, a great question. I um, I actually think to uh, last summer, um, I made the mistake of going on a two-week vacation at the end of May and beginning of June 
Um, and uh, it was a it was an excellent vacation. It was kind of a trip of a lifetime, but it was it was not good timing for my garden. So I actually kind of got happy, didn't have the best garden last year because I I um, was away from home that first you know really like crucial period um, for getting everything in before it got super hot in my area. So. I am not making that mistake this year. I've got all of my vacations planned for later in the summer um, and in the fall. So I'm just kind of, you know, committing to being in my garden at that crucial time, which for me is is kind of now through the beginning of June for getting everything in and getting it well established. Um, it's a uh, it's that give and take between your gardening, you know, goals and dreams and your uh, vacation dreams in the summer. You kind of have to strike a balance. Well, yes, uh, you know, for, for Holly and me, this is our golf game, this is our car collecting, this is what we do and part of our business. But for the average person, uh, maybe it's just kind of a hobby and, okay, if it works, it's great. If not, okay. Uh, it just depends on what your prerogative is. Yeah, true. Uh, we do not mechanically till our garden. Now, we will go in with a garden fork and remove weeds and roots and all of that type of, uh, and harvest uh, when necessary. Are you a tiller or are you a non-tiller? And, and, and either or, why do you choose that particular method for your garden? Yeah, so I am not a tiller. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, it's all bad. And um, But I don't, um, I don't do a lot of tilling. We do have a mantis tiller that we will use to kind of break up some crabgrass and such if we're um, putting in a new uh, bed. But I, I use raised beds, and um, I usually prep the area for a, a new bed with um, really just a shovel and a mattock. I mean, I kind of like to get out there and get my exercise, um, and I don't have a huge garden, so it's it's a good, um, it can you know, something I can manage with actual hand tools. So I will kind of, like, remove um, some grass or some, you know, large amounts of weeds or crab, crab grass, which is hand tools. And then I usually add more um, soil if I'm building a new bed. Um, I kind of changed my garden over this year from wooden raised beds to a stone um, stone bed. So I spent a lot of time this winter kind of raising up that area with the stack stone and then um, adding some soil and compost. So I did prep the area, you know, again with, with hand tools and maybe a little bit with the, the mantis tiller, which is a really small tiller. It doesn't go very deep at all. Um, and then I just add um, some soil and compost on top and kind of build build up from there. So you converted from wood beds to stone beds. Now, was these like what we see in uh, the European uh, area, these old rocks that you found in the creek, or did you go and purchase stones in order to construct your beds to get away from the, the rotting uh, aspect of the lumber? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of the situation as we had the raised beds, the wooden ones for several years and they were starting to rot a little bit and and um i also just kind of uh, my garden is on a, a little bit of a slope and so i kind of wanted to uh build something that would work with the slope rather than kind of working against it um and so yeah we purchased stack stone it's local stone but it's not you know from our property or anything um purchased the the stone and i just built it up bit by bit um and um, you know, they're not super deep in some areas, maybe six inches, um, maybe eight inches on the, on the edge. But, um, but, uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a, a good project for the winter. Um, and, um, but yeah, it has a really nice look to it. I mean, it's not, I didn't mortar it. It's just dry stack. Um, but it, it fits together pretty well. And I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a good season. It's really pretty. I like the, I really do like the look of it. And it, it also enabled me to kind of, to do curved beds rather than just you know straight kind of rectangular um, design, and I really am enjoying playing with that just visually, like seeing um, more of a rounded kind of design for my garden. I really like the the look and feel of it. Okay, so where can we find your book and more about you? Yeah, so um, the book is available you know nationwide. It's um, I sure that it's or hope it's in a local store and different local stores in your area i'm not actually sure about specific ones but it's also available online you can get it on amazon you can get it on barnes and noble um and then you can also purchase from my own website if you're interested in that and my website is my full name it's kellysmithtremble.com so 
there's a little bit more information about me on there, and then there's um, links to purchase. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's where I am. And the book is Vegetable Gardening Wisdom. It's a very good book. I would highly recommend you, uh, if you're not going to buy it, see if your local library can get it for you. Uh, and we greatly appreciate you taking time on the program to enlighten us, Kelly, on some of the gardening uh, information that you shared with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Absolutely. And when we come back, don't go anywhere. It's your garden questions and our garden answers. You can always send us an email at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can visit the website, the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store's hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Get your garden growing with a Chapin Garden Seeder. Eliminate the backbreaking work of planting seeds in your garden. The Model 8701B Seeder makes it easy to accomplish planting rows of seeds of various sizes. Find the Chapin Garden Seeder online or order it through your local Home Depot, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware Store. To see the full line of Chapin Lawn and Garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems raised garden bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice, Juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 juicer. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. 
Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host, Joey and Howie Baird. We're going to go to the Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Uh, we've got a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Uh, yes. Yes, what I is had a question? I had a question on pepper plants, uh, bell peppers and uh, sweet banana peppers. Yes. I, I had them in large pots, and I grew them in, brought them in the house in the late fall. This is like two years ago. And uh, they produce twice, and what it looks like is the pepper plant almost turns into a small tree because the stem gets a lot thicker, and it almost looks like it's got a bark on it. Now, well, if I keep these, will they produce again? Yes, they will. They will produce indefinitely as long as you keep the plant healthy, adequate light and moisture. You're going to have peppers for a very, very long time. Uh, in, in places like Hawaii or in the subtropical areas, peppers will grow indefinitely until nature kills it or uh, the, the grower kills it. Okay. And uh, can I plant the lettuce seeds and things outside right now? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. Here in the upper Midwest, we're good to go on that. You don't have to worry about it. But whatever you're doing with that pepper, continue to do it. You're having great success if you're getting multiple years out of it. Right. Um, I, I listen to your show just about every week, and uh, it's very informative. Well, we greatly so. appreciate that. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Uh, Ivy Organic yeah, Freedom Plant Garden actually protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrub. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 301 plant guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. You can tweet us using hashtag twvg, or Twitter handle is at twvgshow. Don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311. Uh, what is a SCOBY? I, I've seen some of your videos or seen some things online about SCOBYs in, in kombucha. What is that? So SCOBY is actually an acronym for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, and it's what it's what feeds your kombucha. It breaks down that sweet tea to make it fermented and, and have that fermentation process happen. How do you make one or where do you get one you can in order to buy start? one if, okay. you, if you have a friend that like us and maybe you are uh, a friend with somebody who makes it, then they might have extra. Um, buy it online. There's a lot of different ways. Can you make your own? You can. There's directions online how to make your own SCOBY. Okay. So, uh, and and would you, and kombucha, it's an acquired taste. You can do raw yeah, kombucha it's a, or, or fra- flavored. Yeah, it's a fermented tea, and it's got a lot of probiotics. It's really good for you. Um, it's kind of like when yogurt is good for you, same thing with kombucha. It's a, a positive thing for your body. So the next question here is, what type of row cover should I get for my melons and wa- uh, squash? I need one to protect them in the spring when I transplant them out. And in the fall, my, our average first frost date is September the 14th. Uh, and I don't want the plants to freeze. Can I cover them in the spring and in the fall by using one row cover? Or do I need, need two separate kinds? Well, the uh, good news is you, need, you only need one kind. 
It'll work for spring and fall, and there's many different types available. A heavyweight row cover is probably the best option here, and they usually uh, they will extend the growing season in the spring and the fall, and they will allow 50 to 70 percent of the light to go through the cloth. It, a row cover is a cloth-like material that prevents cold air or freezing air from getting in to a certain degree and allows the light to get through. Uh, the heavy weight, based on the type and the, and the manufacturer, usually protects between 4 and 10 degrees. So, like, it can go down to, you know, it will protect it for a certain frost protection uh, capabilities. There are heavier ones out there that will protect even colder uh, uh, if the temperatures drop below 26 degrees Fahrenheit, that type of situation. And the thicker it is, the heavier it is. So you're going to have to weigh them down, and you're going to have to figure out if you need to vent them or any type of uh, situation like that. Frank would like to know, how important is it to include or utilize a cover crop even on a small garden? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. This is Ben Bartlett from Standard Process Organic Farm, and Frank in Oak Creek asked us a question about whether we use cover crops or composting or both and what the best options are. So cover crops are simply crops that are intentionally grown, not weeds, you can't count those, that are never intended to be harvested. So their entire purpose is to collect energy and feed the biology under our feet. They're a good combination with a composted garden area because they're going to help feed that biology that's so important to making our crops healthy. Different types of plants produce or feed different kinds of of biology. And I always say that this whole system of cover crops and compost and keeping that soil healthy is really complex, but it's not that complicated. All we're trying to do with cover crops is collect energy from the sun, These plants release sugars into the soil to feed the biology. The biology breaks down minerals in the soil, makes them usable for the plant, and then the plant grows and collects more sunlight and completes that circle. So using cover crops is a really good idea, even in a small garden area. Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that... The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, if you're a container gardener or a wannabe, we're going to go over the rules of container gardening, what you need to know so you can have the best success, as well as are you planning on putting fruit trees or ornamental trees in your yard? We'll have tree planting 101 class on the program next week, plus author Barbara Pleasant that's, and your garden questions. That's all next week. Do not miss it. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit in its entirety, you can do that a couple of ways. By going to your favorite podcast providing website, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, or by going to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website, clicking on the radio tab or the highlight tab on the right-hand side of the page. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communication Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.